Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Right, well what I've got for you today is, this is just a quick video, um, just to show you a few bits which I picked up over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as I promised, I got quite a lot of stuff to uh, fill the gap where the old Breeze Hill system used to be. Uh, I've accumulated quite a lot of stuff over the past couple of weeks. Um, just quickly, there's a load of server equipment down there, there's a load more other bits and pieces, there's a couple of laptops, um, but what I want to draw your attention to is a load of um, processors which I picked up from a car boot sale uh, about a week and a half ago. Now I bought these from uh, I bought these from a guy at the boot fair who claims he does um, clearance of big yellow self storage units when people don't pay their rent and such. So um, I, I was having a look through all the boxes and that and what I came across was uh, an entire tray of um, gold topped Cyrix uh, and IBM processors. Now there's um, 10 in a tray, there's one tray there, there's another tray here, there's a load of old, let me turn that round, a load of old Pentiums and AMD chips. Uh, these i960s I've pulled out of other stuff, I've just put these in the tray to keep them safe, they weren't included. Um, there's a load of old Pentiums, these are I think 133 MHz, 120 MHz and another 133. We've got um, 166 MHz. We've got a load of these AMD chips, these K62s which are Super Socket 7. Um, they fit most Socket 7 boards, but they go up to, I think the top speed is something like 550 megahertz, which is um, incredibly fast for a Socket 7 board, which would usually go up to only around 233 megahertz with an Intel chip. Uh, there's also a load of AMD Thunderbird chips, which, um, which were very popular about 10 years ago. Um, I seem to remember having one of these and reading in a magazine that you could, um, you could scratch away at this with a pencil and um, it, would, it would allow you to overclock the processor a lot more efficiently. Uh, if you look that up on Google it might actually still be around, I'm not sure, I haven't looked for it. Um, but I think they call it the pencil trick or something. There's a few trays of these old um, Pentium 3s and Celeron chips. I'm not really sure what, I want, what I'm going to do with these. I'll probably just scrap these because most of them aren't really worth keeping anyway. They're just, um, they're just really slow and haven't really got any value or use. Now here's another tray of um, AMD K62 chips which I've got. Uh, these vary from 266 megahertz up to 500 megahertz. Um, there's a few Pentium 4s which I've managed to salvage. Uh, unless you noticed, I, um, I also got this from the same seller. There was a whole box of scrap Pentium 4s. Now these are the old Socket 423 Pentium 4s which were only manufactured for about nine months. Um, after which they moved over to the smaller uh, socket seven, uh, sorry, socket four seven eight, um, and then they went on to LGA seven seven five and so on. But yeah, these are the old um, socket four two three chips. There's about, I think I weighed them. There's about four kilos in there of old chips. Most of them have got either bent pins or um, missing pins. See, this one's completely knackered. Um, I don't know how it's got like that, but but anyway, um, I've got a load here which I salvaged. Um, out of that box, which haven't got damaged pins and haven't got anything damaged, uh, anything wrong with them. I've also got a little stack here, which I found quite interesting. Um, I pulled these out of the same box, and if you can just about see that, uh, these are engineering samples marked Intel Confidential. Uh, these would have been released to um, these would have been released to developers um, outside of Intel to test the chip before it's before it's released to the public, so they can uh, make sure their software works with it and such. Now, uh, under here, I've got another couple of trays of Pentium fours. There's a few empty trays here from other chips, which I think these were a few Pentium fours which I threw in there because they, even though they were probably working, they were only about 1.3 gigahertz, so there's not really much point in keeping them. Let me just shift these over here. 
Uh, again, I think all of these are just old P3s and Celerons, that sort of thing. Um, let's just pick one out at random here. Uh, Celeron 1000, so it's a 1 gig Celeron which has no real use or value. Um, these are a bit suspect to me really because some of them have things like this written on them um, which indicates they may well all be faulty. So what I'm probably going to do is all of these, all of the fibre fiber type boards, I'm going to scrap these. Now these I didn't actually get from the boot fair, I bought these on eBay from a seller who was selling a server and um, it was up in Northamptonshire or somewhere so I, I couldn't be bothered to go up and get it so I simply asked him to remove the processors and post them to me so he was kind enough to do that um, I paid, I think I paid about 20 quid for the server and the um, and the delivery on these chips which was an absolute bargain because considering um, these are probably worth about £30 each just in their gold value um, I've decided to hang on to these as an investment because over the next few years as more and more of these get scrapped as the price of gold goes up um, CPU collectors will be willing to pay more and more for them so I've decided to hang on to these for now um, the same with the Intel Confidential chips, I may well hang on to them, but all of those chips in that box there, and most likely most of these chips here, I may well scrap these because I don't know the history behind them, and uh, there's not much point in keeping a load of processors if um, half of them are not working, and especially when they're only 1 gig Celeron chips. But, um, well thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll have a few more videos up soon. As I say, I've got all of this stuff here to go through. I've got all this stuff which I've accumulated over the past few weeks. Um, there's a few, um, there's an interesting oscilloscope down there. There's a bench multimeter which uh, is, uh, is valve controlled and has some Nixie tubes in it, which should be quite interesting to tear down. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to see what I can do with all that. Well, once again, thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe, keep leaving comments, and uh, I'll do another video soon.